And when he answered it, it was a person whose voice sounded like the same voice he had talked to, who told him uh, that she was, in fact, not dead. Manti was very unnerved by that, as you might imagine. I will let him again talk about that and his reaction to it. But he maintained that secret vis-a-vis -vis the members of the football family until he called the coaches on the morning of the 26th. They promptly reached out to me to inform me of this shocking piece of news. And I arranged to meet Manti upon his return to campus and did so on the afternoon of the 27th. I met with Manti for about an hour and 45 minutes and asked him to review every detail of uh, the relationship as he knew it with this woman. Manti did so, was forthright, answered every question, um, and was eager to share the information with me. I met with him again the next day, as I had put the notes together from the previous day's meeting, to just review again what we had gone over to make sure I had all the details correct. And again, he was a full and uh, excellent partner in making sure that my, the information I collected was accurate. I then took that information and shared it with other leaders in the university for a deliberation as to next steps, what we should do. Some additional questions of Manti uh, were then uh, developed, to which he again promptly responded. And a decision was made to engage an, investi an independent investigative firm to see if they could determine what was at the nature of what increasingly appeared to us to be a sophisticated hoax. While apprised by that investigative firm of their work along the way, we received a final report from them on January 4th. I met with Brian and Otilia Teow in Miami on the 5th to share with them the essence of those findings. We left that meeting with uh, an understanding that they would think about um, what they had heard, uh, engage Manti's future representation, which would be determined later in the week, in consultation as to how best respond and keep the university fully informed of their intentions and work in concert with us when they were ready to communicate the story. It was my understanding, is my understanding, that they were on a timetable to release the story themselves next week when today's story broke. With that, I welcome the opportunity to take any questions. Jack, over to your right. Yeah. Um, it said in the release that authorities are investigating. Are there any, um, aside from the group you mentioned, anyone else investigating this to see if any criminal action was done here? I can't tell you what uh, Manti's representatives have done in, in that regard. Um, I know they intended to pursue his rights fully. As it relates to the university, our loan engagement or referral was to the private firm to do the, do the report for us. And can you just, you talked a little bit about what you, what you talked about. Can you say what you've seen or what the investigator saw that would, um, some people, gonna, you know, obviously who don't know the whole story are going to question whether Manti was behind the hoax. Yep. What have you seen that would, that would prove that, that it could not be the truth? Well, there are several things. Um, uh, one is I would refer all of you if you're not already familiar with it, 
with both the documentary called Catfish, the MTV show, which is a derivative of that document, documentary, and the sort of associated things you'll find online and otherwise about catfish or catfishing. It is a scam, probably revealing my television watching habits, but was covered by Dr. Phil extensively recently, um, that follows the exact arc of this. Um, and it's perpetrated with shocking uh, frequency for me, shocking as an older guy who's not, not as versed in the online world, but, and it is, it is just as this one, an initial casual engagement, a developing relationship online, a subsequent trauma, traffic accident, illness, and then a death. Um, and, you know, as hard as it is for me to, to get my arms around this, there's apparently some sport in doing this and being able to do it successfully. So that was one that we sort of found this external um, guidebook, if you will, or, or, or platform for doing this. Two were the internal con consistencies, right, as we probe, ask questions, um, wanted to make sure it all lined up with what we knew independently, the facts as we understood them. We're very comfortable with the consistency and how it all fit together. Um, thirdly, our investigators, um, through their work, were able to discover online chatter among the perpetrators. That was sort of the ultimate proof of this, the joy they were taking, the sort of casualness with which among themselves um, they, were, they were referring to what they had accomplished and what they had done. Has there been a way for you guys, for you and, and the people you've been dealing with, to just comprehend what this is all about? I mean, it, it's bizarre. Well, as the parent of four children, it's been a really frightening experience. Um, you know, for people my age, this is unfathomable. I mean, versions of this in different forms we would understand, but, but the sort of online, social media, virtual nature of this is hard for us, hard for me, I should speak for myself, to get my arms around. Um, we know, for example, that these perpetrators didn't limit themselves to Manti as a target. Um, and so uh, my first reaction, frankly, was as a father. Uh, you know, the, the way in which young people our students, our student athletes, my children are at risk in this environment to things like this because you just don't know who you're dealing with. Jack, you said this is an online relationship and yet Manti has talked about speaking with a person he thought was an A. Did a person in effect take her position and talk to Manti as if she were his girlfriend? Yeah, and thanks for correcting that. I mean, it, it, online and telephonic. Um, there were lengthy, long telephone conversations. There was sleeping with the phone on, connected to each other. Um, so all of those, all, all of those things. Um, you know, the issue of who it is, who's playing what role, um, what's real and what's not here is a more complex question than, than I can get into. Yeah, one more. Um, you mentioned the, the perpetrators, Manti wasn't the only one he targeted with other people at Notre Dame or the other the bigger scheme? Or? I'm not aware of anyone else at Notre Dame. Okay. Um, and the, the Deadspin report said that Manti had a relationship with who they thought the perpetrator was, whether it was a cousin or a family friend um, is that true, and do you know if that played into the motive at all? Um, uh, that characterization does not square with my information, but I'll let the Teos address it. Okay, and then last one for me. Um, the day of the national championship game, when you guys had knowledge of this, there was a pregame special on a, a news morning show about his story. Did you guys know they were planning on doing that? Did you do anything to try to talk them out of that, or how did you handle that situation? Uh, where did it air? On I think it was a CBS morning I'm show. Not, I'm not familiar with it, okay. so 
uh, I guess the quick answer is since I didn't know it, I, uh, we didn't. We were very conscious of the fact that we didn't know what we didn't know. And so, um, you know, we recognize the challenges of that. If, if Manti got a question in a media session, you know, about that, how do you, how do you respond to that? We, that? we recognize the challenge of that, and we, we weighed those difficulties against the, on the other hand, these other issues that affected timing. I'll say one thing, when the investigation concluded, you know, when we got the first report from the investigators, the one thing we were certain of was that this was coming out. There was too much online chatter about it. it was, there, was, there was not an intention, a belief, anything that this would be a story that didn't get told. It was, it was clear it would. We had hoped the first person to tell it would be Manti, and again, the expectation was that was going to happen next week. And uh, he, he didn't get that opportunity without someone else having told the story, but he'll at least have an opportunity to talk about it in the future. <laughs> Did he explain at all why he waited the two and a half, three weeks to tell the coaches after he had the suspicions or got that phone call? He wanted to talk to his parents and he wanted to talk to them in person. He went home for Christmas break. And that's Manti. That's, you know, that's the son he is. He wanted to have that conversation with his parents face to face. He wanted to consult with them. He wanted to get their advice. And uh, it was on the basis of that conversation after, after having concluded it, that he called us. Yeah. Jack, did Manti receive any other communication following uh, the incident at the ESPN Awards show from the people uh, saying they were Linnae? Yes, it, 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 they continued to be persistent. It wasn't, it wasn't a single contact. And, and when did that stop? I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know exactly when. It, it, it dissipated in time in part because he wasn't responding. But I don't know exactly when it stopped. And the last question for me, uh, does the Taylor family in Notre Dame uh, intend to publish any part of the reports or findings in the future? We do not. Jack. Yeah. You mentioned the parties being persistent with man I mean, did that? Did you get some more insight into what their motives were and what, what did you discover through that continued contact? Well, to, to they were, you know, Everything here had a story, you know, it wasn't, it was, you know, there was, there was, there was another story to explain what had happened and to restart the relationship. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of that, Manti can, but, but, you know, the next phase of the hoax was played out. Here's why we did what we did and now here, here we are back, um, still in character. So to be clear, when they tried to restart the relationship after Lene admitted that she, in fact, not died. Yes. When you talked about the online chatter that your investigators discovered, what did you discover about the motive at that point? Is, and is it, you mentioned sport, was that it? Was there any other motive that, that came to light? Well, all that comes through it is a, is a sort of casual cruelty. You know, they're enjoying the joke there. You know, it's a sort of, these, these shockingly um, casual comments about what they were doing and how they were doing it. And in your investigation internally, did you find that Lene had had contact with any other members of the team? Did you speak to the members of the team about you know, what they were called about those conversations? Or was it strictly you only talked to Manti? Man, man, Manti. Just make sure I understand correctly. He was at a lot of awards shows. It was one in Orlando at the ESPN one that you're referring to, right? Yes. Okay. The investigators, these Notre Dame investigators, FBI, no. who are the investigators? No, they're private. They're, they're independent private investigators who, have a, who had a special expertise in this sort of thing, who had experience sort of tracking um, online activity. Um, and, and so while I'm not going to identify the company, that's who it, it was, a national company, independent. Jack, did, um, just to clarify, did, did the team know at any point until do, do players just finding out now, today, like everyone else? Yes. I mean, um, uh, the two coaches knew. 
I knew, um, and Manti had taken a couple of teammates into his confidence. Are you able to tell us which coaches he talked to? Uh, Diaco and Kelly. For those of you who don't follow us, that's the defensive coordinator and the head coach. The um, perpetrator or the female voice that you said, you know, that they would sleep with the phone up to their up to their ear or whatnot. Do we know where she is? And I'm assuming investigators have had to make contact as an apology forthcoming in the future. Will we ever hear from her, the one that provided the voice? I don't I don't know the answers to that. I mean, you you you, you wind up with a uh, with online footprints in this case. And, 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 and at that point, we didn't once we were satisfied, we understood the dimensions of this. We shared the information with the Teos and left to them and, and, and the people they'll be working with to decide what next steps to take. And just lastly, what's the university's response to say, you know, the 20-some-year-old fans that, are, that have, have experience with this that say, if you've actually never met her in person, it seems slightly deceiving on his part to bring such attention to it. Then you don't know Manti, is my answer. Um, Manti lives his life on his sleeve. I mean, he is, he is out there. And as I said earlier, and I don't think this was an accident, they understood, given the nature, pretty extraordinary nature of this man, the more trouble she was in, car accident, diagnosis of leukemia, failing health, the more engaged he would become, the more the more focused he would become and the more dedicated he would become. And that's exactly what happened here. And, you know, I'm, for those who are suspicious that that can happen um, in, in sort of a virtual environment, I think there are a lot of examples out there that suggest otherwise. I mean, this documentary chronicles one of them. Um, but as we've gotten into this, I've been surprised to learn the frequency with which it exists and the cautionary tale it affords to, to those same young people. Um, you know, the people who will be least skeptical of this are the people who, who live their life in, with social media as an important component of it. Um, skepticism probably increases with age because it's harder for, for those of us who aren't fully engaged in that medium to sort of understand how it can be uh, used to this effect. Jack, what did you guys advise Manti to say had he gotten a question directly after uh, about Lene? I know he got one question, but it was kind of within the context of another question. He was able to avoid it. But what did you guys advise him? You know, we, we encouraged him to try and focus forward and focus on the game and not, not, not draw attention backwards if he could. And so that was, it was that simple. It wasn't very, very complex. Um, again, we understood the challenge of that. But... We were weighing those competing interests in a, in, in a way that we felt was the right balance. And sorry, one more. And do you think this affected his play that night? No, I don't want to say that. Um, uh, I, I will only tell you um, that starting with my interaction on the 27th and continuing today, it's, infect, it's, it's impacted Manti as a person significantly and there's a lot of tragedy here there's a lot of sorrow here but the thing i am most sad of sad about is sorry <clears throat> that the single most trusting human being I've ever met will never be able to trust in the same way again in his life. That's an incredible tragedy.